Welcome to the War Report. In this story, we're going to tell about the one German POW that had escaped from Britain and Canada and America and made it all the way back to fight the Allies again, which is a pretty impressive feat. So the story is called The One That Got Away, and this is part one of that story. Oberleutnant Franz von Vera was one of the most flamboyant and daring fighter pilots of the war. When he, he decided to break out of a British prisoner of war camp, circumstances and his own quick wits made him an exceptional danger to British security. The authorities knew this, yet he eluded them by means which made his feet and escape classic. British, Canadian, and German sources have been used to compile his enthralling story. Oberleutnant Franz von Vera, marching between impassive guards, traversed the long corridors of the Air Interrogation Center at Cock Fosters and was ushered into a pleasant, richly paneled room. It was completely dark, save for a powerful reading lamp which cast the circle of light on a massive mahogany desk. Behind this sat an RAF officer with a thin lined face, bushy eyebrows, and an upcurling mustache. He spoke in facile but slightly accented German. I am Squadron Leader Hawk. Sit down, Oberleutnant. As the prisoner clicked his heels and bowed stiffly, he noted a silver knob walking stick propped against the desk. It reminded him of the foppish British officer popular in German newspaper cartoons. Oberleutnant, 13 British aircraft shot down and half a dozen destroyed on the ground is quite a respectable score. There was cold mockery in the interrogator's voice. As a minor ace of the first war, I am especially thrilled to meet one of the major aces of the second. Von Vera mimicked the other's casual drawl. I have not read of your exploits in studying the Royal Flying Corps. Fascinating history, he said. And intrigued as I am to meet you, I am not going to reveal any military information. He paused for a moment. Then added with sneering insolence. But how stupid of me, Herr Major. No doubt it was you who shot me down. The squadron leader said nothing. The long silent which ensued was finally broken by the wail of an air raid siren. Another siren began and then another until the screaming covered the whole London area. Von Vera smirked. More German bombers overhead. It was 7th September 1940 and the all-out battle of Britain was well underway. Suddenly the squadron leader pushed himself up from his chair, seized his walking stick, plunged the room into darkness and walked over to the window. Despite the wailing sirens, Von Vera could hear that he limped heavily and that one of his boots squeaked. His interrogator was wearing an artificial leg. Forgive me, Herr Major. I'm terribly sorry. I had no idea. There was no reply. The squadron leader had drawn back the blackout curtains and was staring into the London night. Presently, the wailing died down, siren by siren. Hawks redrew the curtains and returned to his desk. As he snapped on the lamp, he tipped the shade so that Von Vera sat facing its harsh light. Tell me, Oberleutnant, he said casually, which of your friends in the headquarters staff will of the second group of number three fighter Grishada will look after Simba, your pet lion club. Sani, perhaps? Von Vera gasped. Since his capture two days before, he had divulged only his name, rank, and serial number. Yet a British interrogator knew not only of his unit but the name of his pet lion and the nickname of his best friend nor was he bluffing he seemed to know everything he even commented on how slender was von vera's claim to being a baron a title which the young flyer often used. For the next two hours, squadron leader Hawks continued his devastating attack, his sarcastic voice cutting deeply into the German's arrogance. I must congratulate you, Oberleutnant, he said, on your flair for publicity. He brought out a transcript of a German radio program on which von Vera had told of shooting down Five hurricanes and destroying four more on the ground, all in one solo raid. Although there had been no witnesses, the feat had been lauded in Germany as the greatest fighter exploit in the war. Hawks, half sitting on the edge of the desk, leaned over the prisoner. His voice was icy. You know as well as I do, Oberleutnant Baron von Vera, the Red Devil, the terror of the RAF, that there was never an 
an incident even remotely resembling your alleged exploit. The RAF could hardly have suffered the loss of nine hurricanes without being aware of it, Hawks said. And item by item, he pointed out the absurdities and holes in the fabrication, including the discrepancies between what Von Vera had said over the radio and what he had told the press. In the end of the story was manifest and Von Vera was sat silent and abashed. And now the squadron leader struck. Suppose your fellow prisoners got to know what you and I know about your famous exploit. What sort of life would you lead in prison camp? You'd be the laughing stock of the place. Von Vera was smiled weakly, but smiled nevertheless. Herr Mayor, I know that what price you are likely to ask for keeping quiet. Military information. His voice gathered firmness. I will tell you nothing, Herr Major. You may make it impossible for me to live with my comrades, but the alternative would be much worse. I couldn't live with myself. The interview was over. Von Vera had not broken under the squadron leader's interrogation and as hawks rang for the guard the prisoner showed a flash of his irre irrepressible spirit Herr major i'll wager a magnum of champagne against 10 cigarettes that i escape in six months it was all it was well that hawks did not accept the wager he would have lost 10 cigarettes so that's the end of part one of this story it's going to get a lot better wait for the next part two